Hello everyone, and welcome to Project Zomboid. And we find ourselves in a fairly precarious predicament. Oh, this is not a good place to be. Uh, so those who don't know this game, I'll explain a little bit about what it is. And even for those who do, I've modified a fair bit of the experience, so I'll explain what's going on here to you as well. Now, I've wanted to do a series on this game for a while now, because it is one of my favorite games of all time. As a huge zombie fan, this isn't just a zombie survival game. It's essentially an entire life simulator with zombies in it. It is so incredibly detailed. But I'll go more into that as we go. We've got to attend to all of our needs, but right now, uh, we really only have to worry about the basics. Which is how we're going to get out of here alive. That's our goal for the series. Not just in the immediate moment getting out of this building alive. It's about how we're going to get out of this city. We're currently in the modded urban area of Raven Creek. And getting out is not going to be as simple as getting in a car and driving away. This place was quarantined at the start of the outbreak. I like to roleplay it as we've just kind of been chilling here for as long as we could. But that's no longer going to be a possibility. Listen, I can hear zombies banging on doors all over. This run might be over before it starts because this game is incredibly hardcore. If we get bitten, we are dead. One mistake and it's over. Which is why we need to treat this as if it's our own real life. Unfortunately, I'm not seeing a whole lot of use in these crates. At least nothing that's immediately useful. The first thing we're going to need is a weapon. But yeah, as I was saying, at the start of the outbreak, this city was quarantined. The only way out that I know of is a tunnel on the northern side of the map. And that tunnel is going to be an absolute gauntlet, probably clogged with trapped cars, people who never made it out. Not to mention military checkpoints on either side. It is going to be very, very difficult to get through. And we can't even attempt it until we have the tools to tear down the barricades and the ability to clear out the zombies surrounding it so that we can even get the chance to do so. But none of that matters if we can't make it out of this building. Like I said, we're going to need to attend to all of our needs in this series. And one of them is just finding a place to rest our head at the end of the day. And that place certainly isn't going to be here. It's dark in this apartment, and I can hear them all around, but I don't see any of the doors being knocked by movement. Early on, with no weapon, we probably can't handle more than one or two zombies at a time, and if we can't handle them quickly, other things will make their way to us pretty soon. Uh, don't see anything of use here. We should probably be turning off TVs and closing curtains so that we'll draw fewer zombies to us. They're attracted to light and noise, which means that they're going to be attracted to this building once nightfall comes. Even now, maybe. Scared to leave? Scared to stay? <laughs> I, I guess we can grab this mallet to use as a weapon. Not really off to a good start. Before we get moving, I'm going to retreat back to the roof, and we're going to learn a little bit about our character, because everyone is different in this game, much like in real life. Uh, after we grab some food... I'll look at them all out there. Maybe it's better to just make a run for it? But right now, stealth is definitely our strength. I... <laughs> I should be moving. If they're if they're banging on the lower doors and windows to this building, then they'll be in soon, and it'll be that much harder to get out. Uh, but I've got introductions to make. So normally when I make a character, what I like to do is just randomize, randomize, randomize until I see someone that I think I can make a story out of. Now what I've chosen for my character is he's a repairman named Horace Barnes. And just looking at this guy, I like to think that he's a pretty chill, laid-back guy who just kind of does his job doing repairs around the place with his headphones in. And for that reason, might have missed the signs of everything that was going on outside. 
and by the time he realized, didn't really know what to do, so just kind of stayed put. Now, he's a pretty chill guy now, but one of the things that I really like about long-term survival in this game is that you get to see how your character kind of evolves naturally. I'm a scared guy, but I'm gonna have to be brave for at least this moment, at least until I can find somewhere to rest and really plan out my long-term strategy. We're gonna need a base to turn into a fortress if we're to survive in this city. And to do that, well, we're gonna have to leave this building, because it sure ain't here. I think there's just too many around. They're already starting to make their way in. And yeah, as suspected, the lower I go, the louder they get. I want to close these doors behind me, which leaves me in darkness. This is very much a horror game, just by virtue of how vulnerable you are. Listen to it all over the place. Uh, a fanny pack? Probably better than nothing, although I'd like, I'd like a hiking bag or something. Nothing of use here. I've got some food on me, so we're good in that regard. No water bottles yet. And we're gonna need those to have water carried with us. Always good to have a backup weapon. A frying pan should do the job. If it worked for Wilma Flintstone, it's good enough for me, right? And we'll have a drink of water first, since we don't really have any water bottles on us. I think we're gonna have to skip the lower floor and just make a mad dash for survival, because this is not a good place to be. We'll do further introductions only once we've gotten out of here. Our first zombie, and she is a nasty one. And look, she's missing her entire face. All the zombies are randomly generated with clothing and damage. Uh, but I'm hoping maybe if we can kill her, maybe she'll make less noise and attract fewer of them. And it's always a good idea to push them down and then give them a good whack. And just like that, this area is silenced. Maybe buying us a little bit more time. What can we see from here? Not much down into the alley. Now, that's actually a good question. Do we go down into the alley where we'll potentially be less visible? Or out onto the street where we have more room to maneuver and run, but there might be more of them? And these are the kinds of questions we have to ask. Now, the way I see this game, there's a very significant reverse difficulty curve where you're very, very likely to die in your first couple of hours. But if you can survive that and survive your first couple of days and survive your first week, you'll be much more established and have much more time to think. After that, it tends to be hubris that does you in. Unfortunately, hubris is kind of the goal of this series. We have a much longer term goal than just survival, and that's to get out of the city which is not going to be easy by any means to do that. We're going to have to get into a lot of combat, but right now we simply are not equipped, both in terms of our character and in terms of equipment to do that. Okay, one at a time. Can we get your attention? There's one on that window right there, and they can break those windows fairly quickly. Nope! i uh, really got to be careful around corners. Okay, push them down, and I'm actually going to stomp you to death in order to save condition on our mallet. Fortunately, you don't have anything too useful to me. Actually, it looks like there are bars on these lower windows. I previously did a series on this channel, if you want to watch it, of me clearing the prison, and in that prison, the bars were actually unbreakable. Is the same true here? This is a modded map. Uh, I don't know, is that... If that's true, if that's the case on every window, that might actually be making a case for the long-term viability of this location. We want something with a lot of floors, for sure. But first, we've got to silence the noise. Yeah, yeah, you're out there. Anybody in here? Uh, no, there are already windows broken. There's probably already somebody in here. No, I think we have to leave. Out onto the road. 
It may seem intuitive to make a mad dash, but remember, the sound of you running makes a lot of noise, and the more of them we have on us, the more difficult it'll be to turn and fight if need be. So I like to clear out what I can. From the moment I hit the street, that's not going to be a viable option. Okay, this is screwed already. Uh, but once again, it's important not to run. It's important not to panic. We are faster than them at walking speed. And this is something I really like about this game, is that it does force you into situations that a lot of zombie action games simply wouldn't put you in. You have to think about what you'd be able to physically pull off as a person. It might be easy to run away, and it might be easy to think of zombies as slow and therefore not a threat. But that's not really the case at all, because when you're running, you're running away from zombies, creating a conga line, and you're running to a place with more zombies. And so it's very easy to find that you just never make your way to a safe place, or to a place that'll be safe for long, and now you're completely out of energy, unable to fight. That actually did sort of happen uh, at the end of Season 2 of The Walking Dead. We saw that in action, but um, I'm not going to talk too much about that series, even though I do love it. Uh, you can hear my thoughts on that uh, in the couple of videos that I've made about it. Perhaps I'll link those in the description. Ugh, there's just so many. Even at walking speed, it's so difficult. This is something that frustrates a lot of new players, is the endless conga line. But I'll give you a couple of tips on how to avoid this. You can move through trees, but zombies can't see through them. What you really need here is to break line of sight. Break line of sight and change direction. That will buy you a lot of time. If we can break line of sight through these trees, making sure that the ones that come through can't see us when they do, moving quietly as we do, we can make our way to this little building right here where we can hopefully take these guys and maybe... Oh, no. The problem is it's an urban area, so there's just so many of them. This is going to be make or break. If we can survive this, we have much better chances for the series as a whole. Hopping fences is good, too, and rounding corners, because... Ah! Never mind, this is going to be real difficult, I can see. Remember, if you can't fight everything, don't try and fight anything, because you're just wasting energy. Push them over if need be, but you're not going to make your situation any better by trying to kill them. You're just going to wear yourself out, you're just going to wear out your weapon condition. I think what we really need is to get inside here. Those walls are glass, so it won't buy us very long. Maybe, since we've gained some distance, we can actually start to fight all this? No, we can't. There's more than I thought. But moving through buildings is almost like moving through a tree line in some ways. I'm just really nervous to come through here because I'm worried that if one door is open but the next door is locked... We could be trapping ourselves. Okay, you're open. Close behind us. Please be open. Otherwise, we can smash the other side. Yes. And that helps us a little bit. I just hope there's not a lot in this hallway. You can stand on top of zombies to stop them from standing back up. Very useful if you're dealing with more than one at a time. Ah, a digital watch. That's awesome. You always want to try and find a watch early on, because uh, that allows you to not only tell the time, uh, but your date and uh, and temperature. And now we found the key to this building, uh, which will enable us to open any door. Not that we want to stay here long term. It's literally a glass house, and zombies are all about throwing stones. But we do have some breathing room at long last. Uh, nothing in the fridge. We do have some sheets. I'm going to take one of these with me, because in lieu of medical supplies, we can tear these up to craft sheets. Uh, I'm going to go over some of the changes that I made to this game as we go. But one of them is that I can only die, or rather, I can only become infected from zombie bites. I will not be infected by scratches or lacerations. It has to be a bite. I'm going to turn off this hallway light so they'll be less prone to be attracted to this area. Uh, 
And there's a whole bunch milling around out back. The beach is populated. Hopefully I can get some snacks like chips. Yes, those are good energy in short order. However, there's only so much I can carry, and if you look up there, I am starting to get anxious. We don't want to stay here. Now, the reason for that is because I've taken the smoker trait. Now, I always, in the current iteration of the game, recommend taking the smoker trait because it's basically free points. It enables you to get a couple of positive traits, and it doesn't really have a big impact on the game. Like, you'll never have any health effects, you won't have worse stamina, nothing like that. However, oh, I should not have opened this door. I thought there was only one more. Okay, stand on top of these guys so that they can't get up, and just keep smacking them down like whack-a-mole. That's what we've got to do. Uh, don't do hitbox shenanigans with me right now. Killing off the indoor population is actually a good thing right now. It's, at least there's less of them to chase me when it finally hits the fan. Uh, but what was I saying? Uh, oh yeah. So with the smoker trait, um, it's basically free points once you can find cigarettes and something to light them with. Before then, our anxiety is just going to keep increasing. And that's really bad for us. It makes us less effective in combat. It makes us scared. We just gotta find some. Which is another one of those early game hurdles. Like I was saying, if you can establish yourself early on, you're much more likely to survive long term. However, you are extremely likely to die early on, especially in such a densely populated urban area as Raven Creek. Now, it looks like the parking lot is mostly clear. I think we can make our way outside. And we've got to start thinking about long-term housing. It clearly ain't this place. Uh, and we also want to start thinking about finding a car. Now, finding a car is really, really difficult. Because not only do you have to find one unlocked, you also have to find the key. Hopefully you'll find it in the ignition or in the glove box, but most of the time you're not going to be so lucky. Push you. Oh no, it's Bob Ross! Stand on them. Fight. Kill. Kill. Come on, Bob. And kill. And we increase our short blunt skill. We have all kinds of skills that we'll have to level up, and because I find the default to be somewhat painfully slow, one of the few things that I've changed is that I've set the XP gain to a 2 times modifier. Well, there's a school bus over there, which is not really something I want. Doesn't really seem like something that, even if I could get it going, would be good for maneuvering these streets. Although it may be something to consider for the storage space uh, once it comes time to leave. Ooh, we have a gun. Uh, which I'm not going to use right now, as I'm sure any zombie fan understands why. Uh, we don't want to be making noise right now, but even more specifically to Project Zomboid, uh, we don't want to be taking shots with a pistol because it's just so inaccurate. You won't get very much out of it. A good starter weapon to build your aim skill is a shotgun, and we are going to go ahead and take that jacket. Even though it's covered in blood, and it's very hot out in the July heat, we want to wear that jacket because it'll help protect us from bites and scratches. And we've just leveled up our sneak skill as well, which you get from sneaking around zombies. Uh... Maybe this building right here? Uh, I'm trying to look for something that has a lot of floors because since we're not going to have the tools to barricade early on, we're going to want something that we can just sort of minimally fortify, have multiple ways in and out, and more importantly, several floors high in order to ensure that they won't just kind of accidentally wander their way to me in my sleep. That pickup truck might be worth looking at, and this building has shutters over the doors. Perhaps it's storing useful supplies? Ooh, a screwdriver. We'll definitely want one of those. Mm, 
We could potentially climb that fence to get in, but I'm still not quite sure what this place actually is. Uh, no doors, it's just a parking area. Anything in the back of this pickup? Duct tape. And that tarp will be useful later on, maybe? If we want to live a nomadic lifestyle. But we can't get in. Yeah, tarp is useful uh, if you want to build a tent. I'm kind of weighing up this tall building on the right here. Uh, if we can start to clear this street... Uh, that's the thing. You want to avoid the big herds and clear things out little by little. This difficulty setting that I'm on is Apocalypse Difficulty, which is kind of the game's default mode, with the exception of a few things. I, I hear all this moaning, but I can't see as many as I'm led to believe there are. But divide and conquer, that's the strategy. If you want to try and take an area, you want to draw one or two at a time and kill them as convenient. You can pile them on top of each other so that they don't get up. Ugh. I hate it when they're getting up and it causes the hitbox shenanigans. It's one of my biggest issues with this game. And a whole bunch of them are up, fighting three at a time. That is not good for the current part. We are just very, very weak right now. Our weapon is not great, but we're getting there. I'm actually performing surprisingly well in this fight. I think Repairman actually gives me a little bit of extra strength, and I think we're seeing the benefits of that right here. Once I get safe, I'll do a breakdown of every trait that I've taken on this character and how it impacts the playthrough. Ooh, and we find a Glock and a box of 9 mil rounds that will potentially be useful once it comes time to start clearing the Cordon. However, I'll tell you what, I've just found something that's way more useful. You see those firefighters over there? Those suits are extremely thick, meaning if we have to go into like a truly, really dangerous situation later on, they will provide ultimate protection against bites and scratches. I would very much like some, but they are kind of densely clustered. I don't want to make a whole lot of noise right now and draw them over, so let's lead this little congregation over here. I also need to find more weapons. I mean, this mallet, it's serving me better than I thought it would, but it's not going to last forever. Okay, let's stand on them and start the smacking. Things get exponentially easier the more you kill. Ooh, and you've got a gas mask as well. I don't know if they actually do anything in an unmodded game, but they sure look cool. Unfortunately, their helmets are really protecting them from smacks right now. But we got them. That's great. A huge supply of... Look, even more guns. We've got uh, we've got more suits for protection. And boots. Military boots, which will protect our feet. We're off to a good start. And see, these are the things you have to think about. This game is so detailed that you actually have to look at... Ooh, that zombie. It's got some boots that I really want that'll help me out. Ooh, that one has winter clothing. Ooh, that one has a rifle sling over its back. And so you end up, like, taking risks to go after specific zombies. Your needs in this game are so varied that you end up going on all kinds of weird missions that you wouldn't get if it were a game that's more action-oriented. And that's what I love about it. Going on these crazy trips to obscure locations for a particular piece of equipment and things like that. Now that building right there... It's got roof access, it's got bars on the windows... And I don't know if we'll be able to do anything with that. Right now, I'm just kind of looking around for a building we can, you know, hole up in. And I'm kind of thinking it's going to be this tall one on our left here. Because look, it's got metal bars on the alleyways. I'm hoping we can climb those fences. They look a little spiky. And if we can get inside there, despite its defenses, I think we'll have a pretty good buffer with this little courtyard area. We can climb over. Unfortunately, we cannot climb ladders. Tell you what, though, we are going to want to grab these garbage bags because they're going to be useful for building rain collector barrels, which we can use once the water shuts off. 
Now, with the default settings, which is what I've kept, sometime in the next 30 days, we're going to lose power and water, which will happen independent of each other. We want to be prepared when that happens. We can survive, kinda, without power, but without water, we're gonna need alternatives. Uh, we can maybe try getting in through here. Let's see what the deal is with this alleyway. Uh, we've got some negative moodles. We're starting to get a little bit hungry, thirsty, heavy. I mean, in terms of weight carried, so we're starting to struggle just a little bit. But it looks like this does actually lead up and into the apartment. Uh, we may have to break this door down, though. Which is sad, but this is such a good place to be. Without a hammer, we can't do it, but I think this... I mean, this place is already basically a fort. I should probably mention that this is going to be probably a mix of live and post commentary. Just because of the nature of this game, there are going to be long periods of time passing where I'm just kind of doing busy work, and I'll probably condense that stuff down. Now, in order to reduce our carried weight, uh, we're going to start dropping some of this stuff into our fanny pack, which really can't carry a whole lot. I think we're going to eat one of these granola bars we took earlier for some energy. Just to keep ourselves going. And you know what? Corn actually reduces thirst a little bit, so we'll have that as well. Ah, uh, screw it. Why not have a peach? It's cone. Now, another cool feature of this game is uh, if you look to our bottom here... This building is burned down. That's actually something that's random in this game. When it generates the world and the loot and all that, uh, buildings have a random chance of having certain features. Uh, one of them can be that it's burned down. Uh, one of them can be that it's what's called a survivor location, uh, where survivors used to be but abandoned. These places will usually be boarded up, but will have uh, usually a lot more loot inside. Now I'm thinking, this looks like some kind of industrial or storage location. I can hear zombies inside, but if we get in there... We can potentially find some tools. That one broke a window, but it's still trapped inside because of the bars. Oh, there's a couple of them. It's so dark in here. Oh, there's a bunch. But potentially good loot. Uh... Tell you what, if I can push you guys down, maybe kill you quickly before the others are lured. Oh, there's a third. All right, die quickly, please. Okay, now more are coming. Let's open this door onto the street, let there be light. Which, speaking of, it's like 10 o'clock now. It won't be light for much longer. Whatever we're going to do, we've got to do it fast. Now, luckily, we might be all right because the streetlights are still on. But one of the other things I've changed about this uh, in the settings is I've made it so that nights will be a little bit darker than the default. I haven't made it pitch black uh, just so that um, just so that it sort of simulates moonlight. But it is going to get quite dark. Uh, we're not going to have the advantage of being able to do whatever we want willy nilly at night, so we're going to want to... Around the crates, around the crates, around the crates. And close. Alright, so three is a little more than I'm able to deal with in my current state. I've got some negative moodles, and that's not good. And we're starting to get tired, which means we're going to be even more gimped in combat. Dang. Now, did we grab that saw that I saw in there? I didn't. That's a problem. Well, tell you what. I really need a place to sleep. Maybe we'll try to see if the upper floor of this burned building is safe. I don't know how this place still has power, but we'll want to kill that power so that we can draw fewer of them. There's one. Come on down here. I don't want the jankiness of fighting you on the stairs. There you are. Yeah, when they climb over something, you have a little bit of an advantage where they try to, uh, where they have to crawl towards you. They can also knock you down when you're doing it, though, so it's a little bit riskier. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is 
far worse accommodations than I was hoping for. But I think it'll have to do. I'm hoping that by morning, the zombies across the street will have broken down the, the door on the warehouse. And then maybe we can start to make something happen here. I'll tell you what, though. We can at least have a nice meal. Get a pork shop. Close these curtains and put it on the stove. In any run, it's always a good idea to eat the perishables first, because once the power goes out, unless you have a generator and a fridge, it's all going to go. We'll have half now and save the rest for later. Fortunately, we are quite thirsty, and it doesn't seem like the fire spared the kitchen sink. I can hear them banging on doors in the neighboring apartments. This is quite scary, but we have water up here. I'm worried about falling through these floors. I'm not quite sure how that works. I've never really had much incentive to stay in an abandoned building before now. Uh, but hopefully we can find, yes, a bed. That's what I needed. And a bathroom off to the side, where we can find some bandages. Nice. Oh, wait. Oh, no. The bed is, like, partially burned. We can't sleep on it. Uh, we can lie down on it or sit in chairs and stuff with the True Actions mod. That's one of the quality of life mods I've installed. Uh, and in the moment, I guess I should uh, give a rundown of the mods we're running with. We are running with Britta's Weapon mod, because it makes some things about firearms more useful. Uh, we're running with, what else, uh, expanded helicopter events, so it'll give more variety when the helicopter finally shows up. Uh, those who, I'll explain that a little bit more later, but those who play this game know what I'm talking about and are already dreading it. Uh, another that we have is Filibuster Rhymes Used Cars, just adds more variety of cars to the game. And of course, uh, Raven Creek itself. It looks like they have broken through, but unfortunately they've also broken through the other building as well, and they're now pouring out. Uh, this is not a safe place to be at all. And we learned that those bars will in fact break eventually. They're kind of gathered under the streetlight, so now I can't sleep, I can't leave. Tell you what, we need to lose some weight, so I'm going to put away my Glock. Yeah, let's put this stuff away, put away all the dead weight, anything I don't immediately need in the moment. I mean, look, the only thing I can think of is that once we get tired enough, the game will give us the option to just sleep on the floor. Uh, the first couple of nights, they're always the roughest. All of this for want of a hammer. Had I had one, I could have just opened the door to the tower next door. Since it appears we're going to have to be having a little bit of a sleepover together, uh, we might want to wash up, and maybe I'll use this opportunity to talk a little bit more about our character like I wanted to. Now we're already losing some weight. We've survived for 17 hours and killed 43 zombies, which is actually quite a bit more than I would have thought. But let's have a look at our traits. So, of course, we've taken the role of Repairman, which, unfortunately, from right here, I can't see what we've got. But it does start us out with some extra skills in terms of short blunt, maintenance, and carpentry, which is going to help us out a lot, both in the long and short term. If we look at our traits here, the first one we have, and this is something that I take on every single character, and it's something that I always recommend to new players if you're struggling, and that's Keen Hearing. And essentially what that does is you'll recognize how you can only see uh, zombies in a certain cone in front of you. Everything else lost a fog of war. What keen hearing does is it actually adds that to a certain area behind you. And so it makes it so much less likely that you'll be caught off guard by something coming from behind. Because in my experience, the zombie that gets you isn't the 500 in front of you, it's the one you didn't notice coming out of the alley behind. 
and keen hearing is what'll save you from that. That trait alone, I think, is probably the single most useful one in the entire game. Next up, we have Dexterous. I figure that in an urban environment, sometimes we're going to have to grab something from a shelf and get out quickly. So that's why I've taken that. It makes it so that we can very quickly transfer inventory items from one space to another. Next, we're going to start getting into the negative traits that I've had to take. And the first one is weak stomach. I've kind of gambled on mostly being able to cook my food, using canned food, stuff off the shelves. But if we do have to really rough it, if we're forced to the level of scrounging in the dirt for worms or berries or raw meat, we're a lot more likely to get sick from that. We also have Smoker, which I already talked about. Uh, and finally, Slow Healer. Once again, kind of a gamble. I've kind of gambled on the fact that you don't really tend to get debilitating injuries very often. But I've already seen potential for how it could happen. I mean, look, say I'm in this tower over here and I'm forced to escape from the second floor and I jump out the window or over the balcony. If I break my leg, it's going to take a lot longer to heal from that. So that's what a lot of these traits are, is you kind of gamble on never ending up in the predicaments that they would screw you over in. But I figure it makes for better RP if I do end up in those situations. I'm assuming I don't just die. Another thing we have to worry about is, uh, I'm not sure to what extent it affects your character, but I like to keep my clothes clean, and you do have to wash your clothes. They'll get covered in blood and dirt and sweat. So it's something I like to do, because I can just imagine the discomfort. And later on, being able to wash your clothes actually does become somewhat of a luxury as water starts to become more and more scarce. All right, we're now ridiculously tired. I'm going to have a drink and see if we can't just sleep on ground. Yep. And hope we don't die in our sleep. We're probably going to sleep quite late, considering we were up until like 6 a.m. Yeah, it's 2.30 now. But we awake rejuvenated, eat some cold pork for breakfast, and ready to head across the street to see if we can't find some more useful gear. Another actually like annoying priority at this point in the game is we do have to find ourselves some cigarettes. Now, what's the situation across the street? Hopefully most of that herd will have wandered off. And it looks like it has, actually. They move more down that way, uh, which isn't great for us long term, but in the short term... Okay, you're down. You're down. As long as we can take them one by one, it doesn't matter if there's one or a thousand. Somebody just had a bad time. I'll have that beret. I think it looks stylish. Look, I look like a French artist. Now, uh, they mostly moved indoors. That's the problem. It's just a new one at the end of the street there. Okay, we'll want to lure this away so that they don't make a ton of noise when we start bashing their brains in. One down. More coming out of there, though, which is a real big threat. If I'm to set up shop on this street, like, it is our best bet because we've already killed so many. But we've really got to reduce their numbers. Now, the way respawning works in this game, which I have not touched in the settings, I believe they'll begin to respawn in an area if you don't enter it for three days consecutively. So we should be good in that regard, since I intend to stay fairly close to home for most of the run. It's not about combat ability, it's about controlling the flow, about reducing it to a manageable rate. Okay. Other zombies standing on top of them can hold them down as well, so... Eh. Very, very good. 
All right, that was a lot at once, more than I was comfortable with, but we did it. And that should mean if we can avoid getting them on us, that should mean we have the ability to enter. Uh, still a fair few. Still quite a few. Wow, that's uh, not good. But we've just got to keep shipping away at it. I'm tired again? Are you kidding? You know what? I think it's because I slept on the floor, which gives you a much poorer quality sleep than if you were in a bed. But I don't have access to a bed right now. That's how much we're roughing it at this early stage. Man, maybe I should have just stayed in that original apartment. It's unlikely any of them would have made their way all the way up each of those floors. And getting back wouldn't be the easiest thing. A hammer, yes. And I know that there's a saw in one of these. Fighting near a door is always unsafe because you don't know what's around the corner. Okay, we can grab a saw and a club hammer, which will actually probably make quite a better weapon. There's also nails here and planks, which we can use to help barricade our new home. Yeah, we'll want all of this stuff. All good things. Propane torch. This is a very good stop for if we need tools later on, but right now, I think we should be leaving and focusing on housing. This guy. Should be one more on my tail. Oh no. Excuse me? Was that... Was that a TV upstairs or something? Or did a dialogue box just come out of that one? That's a little bit odd. Then again, it could be some kind of like UI thing that I'm misinterpreting. It looked like it said no. And here's another note about the awesome, like variety of circumstances that your varied needs force you into. I'm at a point where I might do some stupid maneuvers to get my hands on some cigarettes. But we can disassemble this door, which is a drastic move, but I'm sort of okay with it because we have the other one down here, and we're going to be living in the upper floors anyway. Certainly beats the no doors on the burn building. The only thing is that by knocking this down, we are kind of making a bit of a racket. And here we are. The only concern now is going to be, what's the state of the lower floor? Like, the way lower floor. I hear a zombie pounding. So we're going to want to make sure that we're actually as secure in here as we think. Uh, we also don't need that screwdriver in the second slot. I've got to assign some hotkeys. So far, so good. Oh, it's a basement. A ground floor basement. Uh, well... This is good to have. Looks like there's some shelves over there. Yeah, this is actually a really nice place to store loot. I just don't know if I'll really want to spend a lot of time down here, because if they come in above ground... I mean, we're basically dead if we're here. Like, no way out at all. I think uh, in a couple builds from now, they're planning on adding, like, stock basements to the game because of some advancements they made with the engine. And that'll be a really scary time, to say the least. Let's continue exploring our new home. Uh, someone here already drank themselves to death. Uh, but first, let's turn off this TV. Last thing we need is more noise. Whoops. There is food here. A cooking pot, which we can place on the roof. Or I don't think we have roof access, but we can place it outside to collect rainwater. A little airlock in each apartment. That's good for us. I believe the nation believes that you're withholding information. Oh, this is about the infection. They believe you're refusing to address the issue because of the military sensitivity of both the issue and the region involved. Is that true? 
I'm truly sorry, but I'm a disease analysis scientist. I analyze and report, not... Then tell us some science! Listen, we've got some of the best guys looking at samples. People are confused in there. Distressed. Currently, we have no reason to believe they won't recover. Should we be afraid? Categorically, no. Transmission has slowed. The Knox event is contained. Early on, you have, you know, reports on the news and different things. The TV and radio are still going. And with very little fanfare, eventually, that'll just stop. It'll go silent. The power goes off, the water, and next thing you know, the moss and grass starts growing up through the streets. Dirt roads become overgrown and impassable, as well as eventually the regular roads. And the world just kind of evolves into what you think of as the apocalypse. It goes from the zombie sims to, well, the later seasons of The Walking Dead in terms of aesthetics. I believe the developers have said that their plan is to make it so that even from nothing, you can build, essentially, a fledgling medieval society. And to me, that's what long-term zombie media is all about. It's about how people and about how society change, and leaving it to the audience to decide whether it's a better or worse thing for everyone. I still can't figure out how to turn off the lights on that middle floor. But it looks like upstairs is vacant. We've got to be very careful on this balcony. In fact, I might just barricade it. Uh, because if I press E the wrong way to close the door, I could very well just leap over that balcony. Which would be a very bad thing. I really do think this is it. I think the tower is going to be home sweet home. Probably set up shop on the middle floor here because it has probably a bed. Yep. Even though... Even though we can't turn out the lights on this side, which is really annoying, uh, I think it should be okay. Those lights face out into the alleyway. I doubt it'll really draw a lot of attention. And right now, this place kind of depends on not drawing a lot of attention. We knocked down this door so we could get in. That door should hold for quite a long while, but it's definitely something we're going to want to keep on top of. Luckily, we can keep the lights on in our little sanctum here, because we have no balcony-facing windows. But I guess what we should do now is just kind of wash up and go to bed. It's quite a contrast to the accommodations we had last night, don't you think? But for the moment, and this is the most critical thing in the early game, we have a place where we can relax and go to sleep. And this time, we should awake feeling far more rested than the previous day. And now we've got an entire secure bunker of a tower all to ourselves. A nice bed to sleep in. Maybe even nicer accommodations than he had in his own life. What a difference a day can make, huh? As we stand at the threshold of our new fortress preparing for the first time to go out on an actually deliberate scavenging run. Our goal is once again to head back to that warehouse over there and grab some tools and materials. Now, I don't have the ability in carpentry skill to build a door just yet, uh, which we're going to want to do eventually, uh, but there is a project we have to attend to before we can start settling in. Ooh, a cop. Maybe we can get some good loot from you. The bandage on your hand tells the whole story. You have a bulletproof vest. Let's put that on. Uh, we'll also have to remember, once we get a decent bag, to head back into this burn building and retrieve all of our lost uh, weapons and other dead weight that we left inside the burn building. And it's going to be a little bit more of a stealth mission, unless... No, you know what? Combat. I think it would be very good for us to start luring these guys out and reducing the size of the corner herd. They're kind of our biggest obstacle at the moment, and I would really like it if they just weren't here. We're in a pretty good position to lure them little by little, but not if this takes too long. Alright. 
Right now it's a manageable trickle. And this whole street is quickly becoming a bloodbath. It was all done over time, but from the look of it, you might almost believe that I really am awesome. Like a Daryl Dixon type. Unfortunately, I'm not there yet, but in order to make our way through the Cordon and get out of this city, uh, we're going to have to become that cool. Some of you guys have real interesting undies, but all right, let's grab your lighter. Now we just have to find some cigarettes, which you'd really think we would have found some by now. Die. Please, man, all the effort for this one place, huh? And this heads out onto an alley, which the ones in there haven't noticed us yet. So we're going to want a couple of these planks for wood. And I know I saw a tool that I need. We'll want the wood glue. We can use that to repair our tools. This part is really showing the importance of managing your Moodles, making sure that you stack every advantage you have when fighting the undead, because it makes everything so much easier. I will take your key, which will open any door in this building. Bye. Die! Oh, there's so many of them over there. This is a little essential work. I'm just worried a bunch of them will come in behind me, where it's so dark. No, we're leading you out onto the street. Alright, that one has ended up as a crawler. That can happen sometimes if they take damage. Do you see? Do you see the value of keen hearing and armor? Because that one probably would have gotten me if I wasn't armored up and if I didn't have the ability to know she was coming up from behind. It's always, it's always the one coming out of the alleyway. Now, are we hurt? No. Probably just took damage on something. We lost our glasses and our beret. Sorry, beret. But because of planning, we made it out unscathed. Just think, our whole run could have ended right there for as well as it had just started going. And that never changes. <gasps> A machete! Dude, we are so lucky to find one of these so early on. These are one of the best weapons in the entire game. Uh, provided we can get our skill up high enough to make use of it. But I still can't find what I'm really looking for. I don't... Yeah, no, you never want to... I'm glad I started turning to run because... No! Some of the corners are a little bit silly-willy when it comes to these things. You know what? Uh, let's make use of that... Uh, no, nah, I was going to say let's make use of Dexterous, but I don't think I even have time for that. Uh, grab all. Come on. Come on. Come on! Okay, we've got some planks. Goodbye. Screw this place. There's just always more of them. Do I risk climbing this? May not be able to make it, but we can. Excellent. Now let's just get out of here as quickly as possible. Leaving our glasses behind. I want to go back for those, like Indy going back for his hat. But it's always better to run than to risk it. You can always try again, unless you're bit. Oh. And it turns out that the place I had seen the tool I was looking for was right here in the house. I don't know why I see you as being any different from any other piece of meat on the street, but I don't know, something about seeing you the way I did just made it not feel right to just dump you outside the gate. Feels even weirder to do this without even knowing your name, but uh, whoever you were, thank you for letting me use your house and the stuff inside. I don't know if this place was yours or if you were just staying here like me, but... 
In any case, I think it's not bad to end up in the one patch of green in an otherwise grey concrete city. And I don't think anybody should bother you here, so that's at least nice. This bottle of bourbon is the one you didn't get to finish, but uh, I suppose this way you can at least take it with you. So yeah, uh, like I said, thank you, and uh, smell you later, I guess. Well, that's the end of this next day. As of this moment, we have killed 95 zombies in attempting to clear out this street and survived for two days and ten hours, soon to be three days. Now the sound of those zombies banging, probably on the house next door, are driving me insane, but for now... For now, I think we're safe. We're gonna fill that empty bourbon bottle, and that will be our first on-the-go container of water, which is something we definitely are in desperate need of, since we find ourselves thirsty so often. And in the morning, we'll start thinking about how to really make this place safe. And how to get ourselves going for the ride to the Cordon. We're gonna need a car, some tools, particularly a sledgehammer. We're gonna have to train our skills so that we can handle the massive hordes that are no doubt gonna be descending on us once the hard work starts. And from there, we're gonna need some idea of what we're gonna do afterwards once we do escape. But that's all if we make it that far. Which, as we all know, may not even happen. But hopefully I've got some of you along for the ride and interested to see where this can go. And until we learn more, if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.